Our guest today is Sir Michael Barber. He was the head of Prime Minister Tony Blair's government delivery unit in the United Kingdom, and now he is the founder and chairman of Delivery Associates. And we're going to ask him today what he thinks the future of government might look like in a post-COVID world. I think people will realize as never before how important it is to have a capable state. Governments that are incapable or incompetent will really struggle to deal both with the health crisis and the social and economic crisis that follows the health crisis. A capable state to me has three or four things that make it capable. The first is it's well informed. It knows what's going on in its country and around the world. It makes good decisions based on deliberation, based on use of evidence, based on good judgments. And thirdly, but by no means uh, least importantly, it implements those decisions effectively so that the citizens benefit. The second big theme will be what counts as value? What do we really value? And value to me has four critical elements, some of which are, are ignored. First is for the money we're allocating, what do we get in terms of outcomes that citizens will notice? The second part of value is the inputs are better managed. Governments are spending a lot of money on the COVID-19 crisis. That Many of them are going to be in debt, possibly for a very long time. That will put a premium on managing the inputs well. That's the second pillar. Third pillar is what kind of engagement are we going to have between government and the population about public expenditure? And then the fourth pillar, which is really important, I call stewardship. Looking after the system so that Whatever you're doing to deliver outcomes, whatever you're doing to manage the money, whatever you're doing to engage citizens, you're leaving the system you run better than you found it. This is not the first epidemic. It will clearly not be the last. Uh, what do you hope governments will learn from this crisis? It's a great question, Adil. And I think um, they ought to learn, and we collectively around the world ought to learn how best to manage crises. There will be more. Uh, you know, the, the, the world, you know, it's 10 years ago, we had a financial crisis. Now we've got a COVID-19 crisis in 10 years or maybe sooner we'll have another crisis. Um, back when I was in um, Downing Street with Tony Blair, we had September the 11th. So these things happen on a periodic basis. And what do you fear that governments might not learn? The biggest fear I'd have is that we think we'll just go back to how it was before after this that you have a crisis, you manage it, and then the next one comes along and it's as though you've never seen a crisis before. The personnel have changed and the, the institutions of government haven't embedded the lessons. Um, I bet you there will be governments around the world that had a kind of dusty approach to pandemic file somewhere that hadn't been looked at for years because they didn't think there was a pandemic really going to come. How might citizens and their attitudes toward government, the idea of government, how might that be influenced by this moment? In some countries that do a good job, they'll say, wow, that's really important. That's, I, I'd kind of forgotten, I'd taken it for granted, but now I realise how important good government is. Not just government, but the public services will be appreciated better. All across the US and all across the UK and lots of other countries, children are being schooled at home. Every parent in that situation is beginning to realise how important good teachers are. So I think they'll appreciate teachers more and therefore potentially appreciate the expenditure of money on education more. Um, and that's my point about value. They'll value education more. But what they really value is not just having the teacher, but what a good teacher does. You have advised leaders at the highest level in many countries. Uh, if the prime minister of a developing country let's say Pakistan, calls you today. What advice do you give them? You have to get your processes for managing the crisis right. So the first thing is get a small, really capable team that has the best possible expertise relevant to the crisis on it. Also make sure that in that team, there are diverse views so you don't get groupthink. Second, on the basis of that advice, Remember, it's your job as prime minister or if it's a minister to make a decision. It's not the job of the committee to make a decision. The science informs you, but it doesn't tell you what to do. You have to decide. That's your job. That's what you're elected to do. Um, you will make some mistakes. 
learn from them, and then check that the decisions that are being made in that group are being systematically implemented right out through the delivery chain. Uh, and that group probably in the heat, in the midst and heat of the crisis, maybe meet, is meeting twice a day, but certainly once a day. It sounds technical, but it's really fundamental. Make sure you've got the right data presented in the right way that helps you make informed decisions. The other thing is while you're going through the crisis is not to lose sight of the future. Set aside a small number of clever, excited people and say, don't worry about the crisis, we've got that cracked. You plan the future. 